Let me tell you about this conversation, that, because I, I think it, it helps not to rehash, but to explain ourselves to everyone and be able to explain yourself, like we were able to do in the halls of Congress, be it the White House or the State Department or anywhere else. The young Oda boy, we were talking about Armenian issues, and he said, why do you commemorate? Why do you guys have demonstrations all the time? Why, why are you lobbying? What are you doing? That happened 98 years ago. Kind of took me back. I mean, I didn't expect someone to say something like that. I, I didn't know what to say. And, and I thought for a minute, and I says, you know what? I says, it's because we believe in American principles, the founding principles of America. We may disagree with the policy, some of the policies they're doing today, vis-a-vis -vis Turkey and invading Iraq and some of these other things, but the founding principles of America are beautiful, and they relate, and they speak to every Armenian. And I said, look at there was an Armenian who wrote uh, a, a thing. I said, let me read it to you, and maybe you can, because uh, I always carry this with me. I said, uh, let me read it and see what you think. I said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I said, an Armenian wrote that. And the kid looks at me, he says, Come on, man. He said, I'm a college student. That's from the preamble of the United States Constitution. I said, that's why we believe in it. And, you know, I said, there's so much more. I mean, the Declaration of Independence, how beautiful it is. And I said, my hero, one of my heroes, John, uh, is Patrick Henry. When he was signing, when you signed the Declaration of Independence in 1775, it was giving up your life basically because now you were on the most wanted list from the strongest country in the world, England at that time. And in the meetings in Virginia when they were going to sign it, Patrick Henry got up and many of you will remember this. Give me, I know not of course what others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. You've heard that before. You've heard that before, I'm sure. I think back to Christopher Rosdom Zavarian in 1890, signing our Zidakid, asking for our freedom and demanding our freedom under the Turkish flag. Then, I think you should hear something else. My, one of my most favorite speeches, if not most famous, that I really enjoyed, and it's now very famous because of the movie recently, but I'll just give you the first paragraph of the Lincoln at Gettysburg. Gettysburg was the biggest battle and more Americans died in Gettysburg than any other battle in the, in the history of the world for the United States. It's significant. Lincoln went there on the battlefield and he said, we swear that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. What a beautiful sentiment. I could see Simon Varatyan in 1918 looking at the battlefields and the dead bodies from the genocide, saying these same words, they have not died in vain. They kind of laughed, these young people, when I said that. They said, oh, yeah, that, that, I, I can understand. Uh, I said, well, you know, we got professors. We got movie makers. I mean, we got talent. I mean, we have books. Bajoyam's new book. I mean, I mean, there's so many new books. There's so many things going on. We have Armenian chairs, and they're vital to the cause. They give us proof to what we want, where we're going, and the Armenian cause that they define us. And they were very impressed. But I said, you know, one thing is very sure. This is not an issue of just our minds. We can get up here and we can pontificate and we can, you know, 
I was a history professor, a political science professor before I moved on into other things. Got a couple of master's degrees. We could go into all the details of analysis and bore you because you've heard it all. I said, this is something that's not in our mind, it's in our souls, it's in our heart. We have to commemorate it on that one day. But we live it 365 days a year. It doesn't go away for us. It doesn't go away. They won't let it go away. I said, can you understand that? And he said, wow. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. I said, let me make it real clear to you. 10 days ago, or a few days ago, now it's 10 days, two weeks. How did you feel when Boston happened? And they bombed the Boston Marathon. And you saw that little eight-year-old kid get killed by a stupid bomb. Three people died. I said, how did you feel? And every one of them said, we were angry, man. We wanted to get them. We wanted justice. We wanted repayment. We're going to follow through. I said, I agree with you. I said, how did you feel on 9-11? 3,000 people died. Two city blocks were completely destroyed. How did you feel? He said, I hated them. I hated them. I was angry. I wanted to do something. I said, well, were you satisfied with saying a prayer and crying? and forgiving and forgetting. He said, how could you do that? That was 9-11, Boston Marathon. I'm gonna forgive and forget. I'm gonna say a prayer and light a candle and walk quietly. Instead of even going hypothetical, why don't we even look at Obama and Bush's actions right after these two incidents? What did they say? Angrily, they got up, Bush and Obama, we will not forgive, we will not forget, we will get them, we want justice, we want the loss of property, the damage is covered. I mean, it got so bad that we went into Afghanistan, we expanded in Iraq. These were all necessary. This is how America reacted, because three people died and 3,000 people died. I said, well, how about a hypothetical situation? Your family, a gang of guys come into your family house. They break in. They kill your father. They rape your mother. They rape your sister. They kill them. They steal your wealth. They steal your jewels, your mother's jewels, your antiques, your artwork. They steal everything in the house. Then they turn around and live in the house and try to cover their tracks. And they denied that we did anything like this. It wasn't us. It wasn't us, the gang denied it. What court anywhere in the world would not convict these people, throw away the key? They say, absolutely, you're absolutely right. That's what I would do if it was my family.